Uh, Scott Derrickson's new movie, Doctor Strange, has received a lot of um, uh, positive reviews, you know, for its special effects and cinematography and its storytelling and, and the quality of its acting. And I think all that's true. But I want to focus on uh, what I think is at least an implicit spirituality in it, that though it's not perfect, is um, an important step in the right direction. Uh, Doctor Strange is played by uh, the always compelling uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. He plays him as this, you know, cool, dashing, uh, handsome neurosurgeon, hyper-skilled, uh, called upon for only the most difficult cases, but also a man who's um, arrogant, um, dismissive of his colleagues, utterly self-absorbed, uh, kind of a first-class jerk. Well, one night while driving his Lamborghini at high speed, he drives off the road and uh, is grievously injured, especially his hands. So the means by which he does his great surgical work, they try everything medically and, and they can't uh, solve the problem. In his desperation, um, he hears about this uh, treatment center in Kathmandu that, that can bring people back from grievous injuries. So off he goes, expecting some kind of, you know, maybe bleeding edge uh, medical research center. Instead he finds um, this character played by Tilda Swinton and she's this bald pated um, mysterious wisdom figure. And she begins to speak of curing people through the manipulation of spiritual forces. And at this, Doctor Strange goes into a kind of a meltdown and he begins cursing and shouting and poking at her and insisting that He's a materialist, he's a rationalist. All that there is is the material world and don't talk to me about this spiritual mumbo jumbo. And with that, she punches him in the chest and then out comes his astral body. And so he discovers this whole new realm and he wonders what in the world is going on. And that's the way his adventure commences. Now, what I liked about that scene was it was a refutation of the comically arrogant scientism of our time, which I've spoken about often. It's on massive display today, especially among the young. And by scientism, I mean the reduction of all knowledge to the scientific form of knowledge. Again, nothing in the world is wrong with science. Go all the way with the scientific method. But don't tell me that knowledge and reality are reducible to what can be known through the scientific method. I mean, one of the major problems with scientism is it's self-refuting, because how precisely do you see, empirically verify, or experimentally confirm the fact that all knowledge is reducible to the scientific form of knowledge? In other words, it's operating on a foundation that it itself cannot provide. But also, it's out of step with the founders of the modern sciences. As I've said many times, from Descartes, to Copernicus, to Galileo, to Newton, coming up in our own time to Georges Lemaitre, so many of the great scientists were not just accidentally or incidentally religious, but were devoutly so. It's by no means the case, despite what so many people say today, that religion and science are uh, at, at terrible odds with each other. I like how this movie kind of challenges this arrogantly dismissive uh, scientism. Well, as the story unfolds, we hear that, uh, and we see, that Dr. Strange has to go through a kind of spiritual apprenticeship. He has to learn the ways of this higher realm. And at one point, you know, he complains to his, uh, his master, and she says, well, it takes a lot of time and discipline, a bit like becoming a neurosurgeon. So yeah, just as you had to go through a lot to reach that kind of excellence, so you go through a spiritual a training of some rigor. Well, that's, of course, in line with all the great spiritual traditions of both East and West. Now, so far so good, but what often happens in these films, and I go all the way back to Star Wars and many others, Doctor Strange is ultimately led into what I would characterize as a Gnostic space. Now, here I mean this spiritual realm characterized by the bitter struggle, struggle between forces of good and forces of evil, pretty much evenly pitted against each other, in this never-ending struggle. Furthermore, another Gnostic element is what he's learning are the sort of spells and incantations necessary for the proper manipulation of this um, Gnostic spiritual order. Now, I already mentioned Star Wars, but think of, of that. Here's a young man that discovers a higher world, has to go through an apprenticeship. What does he find, though, at the end of it? A Gnostic space. 
of the Force, which has both a good and evil side. He learns the techniques and methods by which to manipulate the Force, etc., right? Well, that's as old as, as the Gnostic movement, and you see it very clearly in this uh, movie. Now, you know, again, I, I'm not expecting a, a, a popcorn uh, movie to get its spirituality exactly right, because uh, the, the Bible is talking about something else. Not a Gnostic space, but the space of the Lord God. God is not set over and against some co-equal dark power. Rather, God's the Lord of heaven and earth. God's the Lord of all of creation. Whatever is evil in the universe has been permitted by God, is under the aegis of the divine providence. We're not dealing with a desperate struggle between good and evil, but rather we're in the presence of the sovereign Lord. More to it, and you find this right throughout the Bible and the great tradition, the spiritual life is never a question of learning the means of manipulating the spiritual order. I mean, that's like ipso facto to be in a bad spiritual space if you think you can manipulate it for your purposes. God is sovereign, inscrutable, uncontrollable in his majesty. The idea is not to manipulate him, but rather now to surrender to his loving purpose, to allow yourself to be used as a vehicle for the uh, spreading of grace into the world. That's an entirely different game than learning to manipulate the, the, the uh, uh, forces of this Gnostic spiritual space. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm not expecting a, a pop movie to get you know, Christian spirituality exactly right, but I think in the measure that Dr. Strange might beguile young people out of a deadening and, and self-contradictory scientism, I think it's a good thing. And so let's say two cheers for Dr. Strange. Thank you.